How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Vasidius. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's edition of Should You Summon? This is going to be a pretty fun one. We got a full docket. We've got a one plus one, everybody's favorite banner. We've got a two X and we've got a 15 X on Elowin and Anai. Uh, and I, though, I mean, she's kind of a baller in Arbiter of Frost. I just got top 50 in the world using her video on that tomorrow. But of course, we are still going to release this video just like we do every week, the evening before that weekend's banners. We have the one plus one coming tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we've got the one day 15x for Ellen and I. The 2x, it is what it is. I guess I'll talk about it briefly later on. But you know, it's, this is going to be all about should you summon or save when it comes to the one plus one and the Ellen banner. I've got a treat for you, though. It was worth the wait. I really I really hope so. I promise. It was worth the wait, okay? I'm going to give you a very nice sneak peek of the website, more than I've given you guys before. I'm really starting to feel good about it. It's at a place where uh, I'll just I'll show you already, man. It's starting to look really, really good. So we'll use the website and we'll use our hero list and our tier list to show off Elwin and I. Elwin and I. When Elwin and I. <laughs> they're a combo unit. Elwin and I when we reach that point. But first, maybe the reason some of you clicked on the video, I am going to do a giveaway. So the website, I'm almost certain we're on track for release exactly a week from today, April 12th, next Friday. I wanted to release today, April 5th. Originally, I wanted to release March 1st. But, you know, I know deadlines get pushed. They've been pushed a lot now. That's why I never formally announced it until nearly guaranteeing it would be coming today. As you're going to see, it's looking pretty good. There are still some holes in it. We have a big team and we're working as hard as we possibly can. So I really hope you guys appreciate that it was worth the wait and it will be ever evolving. You know, for V2, we have had a, a lot of amazing stuff that's going to come as well. We're already looking into the future. Don't worry. But what I want to say is because you guys waited, because you were patient, I am going to do two giveaways two takeovers and what i'm thinking i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna give away like three hours of my time to those two people i will do an hour and a half each and we'll see how much we can get done in an hour and a half so if it's like one really hard gear aid three for that person so be it if it's an easy gear aid three and then we can fit a gear aid two or a gear aid one or we do an amr or we do a guild boss then we shall do that uh this way i'm just like i think it's it's nice it's like a nice contribution to time you know i'll make a stream out of it to participate tell me the number one thing you'd be looking forward to in a website. I'll tell you right now, on launch, there's gonna be some amazing stuff. We have our full tier list. There's amazing elements, you know, all the skills, all the awakenings, everything you need to know about the heroes in a very nice interactive way. We have our artifact tier list, sortable, and with the descriptions at level one and level 25 included. And of course, we have our true value calculator for the shop. But there's a lot of stuff that we're already planning on, so you don't really need to say this unless you're so gung-ho, you know, recommended artifacts for each unit exclusive artifact tier list, recommended builds, recommended stats, all that will be coming very soon, but not yet. If there are other things you think maybe we haven't thought of, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see on the website in the future, because this website's going to be a long running thing. This was a huge investment for us in love, in time, and in dollar dollar bills. Yeah. So we're in it for the long haul. You let us know what you would like to see. Uh, and I think I'll just pick my two favorite. I mean, you know what I'll do to make it fair? I'll pick my 10 favorites. So try to get creative or fun or just helpful. I'll pick my 10 favorites and then we'll randomly pick two winners. So let me know in the comments and I'll just announce that already I don't know, Sunday. So you got two days to figure it out. Okay. So there's the giveaway. Guys, this is a should you summon after all. So let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, alrighty, let's go to the events. You can see it already started today, the festivities with 2X. I always like to do this video the night before the banners. I don't really consider a 2X a banner. They run it nearly every weekend. We can start off just by talking about it. Whenever you see crazy, that means 2X. If you're very early on, I say go for the 2X. If you're filling out that Pokedex, you just want to get units. This is the best way to do it. But at this point, there are good banger rate up banners, banger rate up banners every single weekend for top five heroes in the game like Elwin. She's triple S on my tier list. She is so broken good in so much content. As they add more endgame content like Gear Aid 4 and all these new codexes or codices, she only gets better. She is so busted. More on her very shortly. But because of that, if you're late game or end game, you don't pull on two X's. Wait for a two by fifteen or wait for a fifteen that you need a hunt. Uh it just it's not something you should be pulling on. Early game, maybe early mid game, I say go for it. Uh, because you need so much. You have to fill out that roster. Absolutely. However, this weekend, maybe not, because the one plus one, if you have the summons for it, that being if you can guarantee you'll go to pity, is guaranteed 2x rates. So 2x rates, you have a 1% chance to hit a legendary hero, right? It's up from a half a percent chance. So the way you can think of that is 
on average, you're going to pull one every 100. Very easily, you could pull five in 100, or feasibly. It's not out, out it's not going to be easy, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. You can pull five in 100, or you can pull one in 500, right? There's still variance. It's still only a rate. It's still only a one in 100 chance. However, if you can guarantee you hit pity, even if you went to the hardest pity, which is 220, you are guaranteed two legendaries in 220 summons. So that's one out of 110. It's like a 0.9.5% chance. Th that is huge, right? That's a proper 2x rate up that you can guarantee. Nothing, or rarely nothing in these games is guaranteed. If you can get to pity, that will be guaranteed that you're locking in 2x rates. If you're close to pity, you could you could hit two legendaries in 20 summons, right? You could hit in one summon if you're sitting right, <laughs> right next to pity, uh, or you just got lucky on one pull. This for me is the no brainer, unless you don't have the summons. Otherwise I say gamble. For me, I'd still rather gamble for the one plus one uh, because you could easily just pull in the two X and miss. So I'm really talking about early and mid game players here, but I do think this is a hard skip weekend for the two X more so than it already kind of normally is for most players because the one plus one is so good. Speaking of the one plus one, I know people hate missing this. I almost certainly will be missing it. You know, I'm super low on summons. I'm not going to use my diamonds and I've got six of these bad boys. I probably will pull them all since I'm off for fresh pity. Um, but that's just feeling like a gambling man and why not? Worst case, I build a little more pity. However, this is something people get really excited about, but I think people don't understand something. Even though I've, I've talked about it, I'm assuming other people have talked about it a lot as well. When this is happening, there's no rate up. So there's no rate up, and on rate ups, there's always a good hero rated up. You know, Anai, you could argue, has become good because of Arbiter of Frost. She's viable, she's serviceable in Guild Boss, right? But she's kind of the, the stinker hero or the normal hero. She's, she's not as stinky as she used to be, let's be honest. Even though she's anal, she's not as stinky as she used to be. Elwin, though, then there's like a... Lately, it's like a god-tier hero, but at very least, a very good S-tier hero or better than that. Save for that uh, absent uh, Nyx banner. Even though, who knows, Nyx is kind of a god right now for the new Codex boss that, that just came out in Forerunner. So stay tuned for that. We'll try to cover that tomorrow on a Forerunner stream. Um, but these kind of heroes, right, they need rate ups to be found or to be targeted. Otherwise, they need a whole bucket of luck. The way this works on the one plus one is you have a chance to hit a legendary, and then you have a chance to hit another legendary. But how do legendary heroes work? Well, when it comes to legendary heroes are not all made equal in terms of your chance to pull them. You have a 20% chance to get your rare and ultra rare and lord legendary heroes, and you have an 80% chance to get common bucket legendary heroes. So who are the common bucket legendary heroes? There are some really good ones. Valkyra, I'm assuming they're going to demote her. We don't have the rates, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make her extra rare now. But for, for now, she has been common bucket. That's crazy, right? Valkyra is amazing. Calypso, that's a good hero. Cerberus, right? Brokir. These are some really good heroes. Right? especially Valkyra nowadays. But I'm, I honestly, I'm assuming they're going to nerf her rates. If I can find that information, I'll let you guys know. I'd be shocked if they wouldn't after how good and coveted she has become now. But a lot of the other common heroes are the heroes you guys don't want. Azor, Cratch, Shamir, Ezrin. I know not all these guys are bad and all content, whatever, but these are the boring guys that people are not excited to get. You have an 80% ch chance to hit any one of those, right? So what is the chance that you're going to hit a rare hero? Well, you can calculate that by what is the chance you hit a common bucket hero twice? And it's pretty simple. It's 0.8 times 0.8. That 64% chance, you subtract uh, that from 1, so 1 minus 0.64, sorry, doing some quick math here, that means you only have a 36% chance to hit just one, not even two, but just one of your legendaries ending up being uh, a rare bucket hero. So someone from those rares, the Hotsit Boreas Ultra Rare, or the Lords, right? It's something, but it's not better than a normal rate up where just in general you'd be targeting someone and you might have an 18% chance to hit Hex and Zila 2 like we've seen in the past, or what's it, like Artemis and Hotsuit, that was a 36% chance, or 37% chance, it was 19% and 18% that on that one pull. Here, you have a 36, you're going to hit twice, but you might, one of those might be bogus and you don't like it, it might be your A4 Abomination or something, right? And then the 36% chance that even one of them was something special, and you can't even target, right? I know I got into math there, I hope it explains. But because we're getting so inundated with these really high quality banners that are now a 15x rate up, 15x rate up, so that 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 heart, hat said Artemis one, that 37% was back when it was 10x. Now you'd be looking at a 45% chance or something that you're going to not just hit a rare hero, but one of those targeted rare heroes you might want to go for. And then if you add on top of all the other rare heroes and their rates, you're probably looking at 50% chance you're hitting rare hero if you can snag a banner with two good coveted rare heroes on it. All right. Whew. Exhale. I hope that all made sense. Basically, one plus one, I think, follows the same rules now for, for early and mid game players uh, with that break that comes with late and end game players. If you're late in end game and you have a roster complete, you can't waste your time on this because you're probably going to pull Cratch and Abomination. 
You might not, you might get lucky. One time I did this and I pulled Hex and Valkyra. What a time to be alive. So many times I've done this. And again, anecdotal, it's me, but we all, a lot of us have lived this experience. And it's, I got Azor and Cratch. Another time I got Azor and Regulus. Another time I got Azor and Calypso. Calypso's fun, but you know, that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for Elwin, right? You're looking for Artemis. You're looking for Hatsu. Comet Spanner's coming really soon, right? Comet Spanner's coming in one or two or three weeks from now, max. So, if you're early mid game, you need to fill out the Pokédex. You don't mind picking up all those common guys. It's not there's just so many wins on the table. Later game when you're looking for specific things, you kind of have to skip this. So I hope that answers that question. I'm not going to go nitty gritty into spending groups early mid game late game. I just want to give you a general idea because I do think this weekend's pretty straightforward. If you need it, if you need to fill out that Pokédex in the roster, normally you'd go for this, but because the one plus one is here, if you're anywhere close to pity, you go to, for this instead. But if you're in a person who has a full roster, and if you're in a nice situation, and you're really targeting heroes, this is the only one, we, one you care about. And the, situ and the situation's pretty straightforward, right? And the, the answer's pretty clear. If you're addicted to Codex, then you can go for an eye if you don't have her. Her A1 does really help with the magic resurrection. Doesn't help so much, but it's something, right? But really, it all comes down to a binary if you're late game and end game. If you have a full roster, right? Do you have Elowen? Do you not have Elowen? Do you not have Ellen? You have to pull everything you've got in this banner, in my opinion. She is that good. She's probably the third best here in the game, not counting lords. If you have her, her awakenings aren't that cool. Skip. Wait for something better. So I'll just tell you right now, I have her. I have her A0. I never need another copy. If it happens, it happens. I don't care. Really, her A5 is the only thing that interests me. And even then, getting a Wood Elf every ult, it's nice. It gives some control. It's not such a necessity, at least certainly not for any content we have now or I see coming anytime soon. If you don't have her, your life freaking sucks, man. I'm going to be honest. If you're trying to push endgame content, she is on every freaking team for so much stuff she is the best codex hero in the game and that is the ultimate rewards the ultimate prizes the best shop in the game this is where everything comes from right on top of her being just goaded and everything we'll go to the tier list in one second on my website but i mean do you want every two weeks when this comes in then there's two weeks off then it comes back so it's really on a four-week cycle that the shop reopens do you want 10 ancient summoning crystals i sure hope you do <laughs> i really do do you want uh what does this come out to 1250 diamonds yeah that's pretty awesome do you want a bunch of stamina? You probably do. Probably, the, probably that's the order you're gonna go. Crystals and then diamonds and stamina. But boy, oh boy, is that insane or is that insane? You gotta max this stuff out, man. I'm getting triple S on all my codexes now, except for this little pesky guy over here. But you can see, I guess, spoiler alert, number 36 in the world and I can push higher. This was not perfectly optimized. There were a couple bad RNG moments. Shout out to Quaz. We just grinded that out together. But this is so important. And let's check some rankings, right? <laughs> I mean, let's check the rankings. Look who it is, Elowen, Elowen, Elowen. Elowen, 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 Elowen. If it was the Healer Codex, you know what you'd see? The, 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 what do they call it? The Destructive Golem? You'd see Elowen, 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 Elowen. Oh, but what if it was Styx? You would see Elowen, 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 Elowen. She is the best here in the game for all of that. She is such a staple for everything. She is so insanely good. So on that note, let's talk about Elowen. We'll talk about Anai a bit, but I really want to drive home how desperately anyone who does not have Elowen should pull everything on this banner. I'm not saying spend money. I'm not telling you guys to spend money. If you're a spender, you know you're going to spend. If you're not a spender, you know you're not going to spend, right? But she is that flippin' good. So let's head into it. Let's go to display capture. And let me show you what I'm working with, man. I am, I'm really proud of this. So here goes the most closest I've come to unveiling. I spent countless hours making all these portraits fit perfectly and be uh, sharpened and colorized perfectly. Thank you for Dolores. I just taught her how I was doing it. She's helping me out now too. Thank you for Luke for laying all the groundwork for it and all this generally beautiful design. It's really starting to come, let's be honest, this, this stuff looks chic. It looks good. We're really excited. But you actually want some good stuff. We finally got the tier list working. There's a lot of kinks here, guys. There's a reason the website isn't live yet. There's stuff that is imperfect. But you can see it's finally working. I just made all these hero grades, slight colorization things. You think I see I changed the color of A, I changed the color of D. But these are ripped straight from the game. These are the grades that match directly, directly with those fun codex grades over here. So I'm pretty happy with how we made that match. Uh, thank you to Rakanchi for helping us find a way to get those images in a really nice, clean way. But you can see, you can sort this. It's sorting properly now. Here are triple S heroes. Uh, you guys saw that yes, uh, yesterday when we went through it. You can see I don't have every hero portrait perfectly fit in. So Praetis, I just finished cropping him. I'll have to upload him. But it's really starting to look good, right? Really starting to look good. So if we sort by some things, or you know what, she's right here. There she is, one of our only triple S heroes. But if we just go down the list, actually, and we look at Elwin, what are we going to see? S, S plus, S, 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 S plus, S plus. Uh, not really going to be used for Conquer. There's no place to put her. But then look like S plus, S plus, S plus. Uh, right now, you do not have featured Arbiter of Frost uh, or the Tank Codex. That will be for the, the, the version update that's coming when the website actually goes live. She can't be used for the Tank Codex, but she's a decided S plus or Arbiter of Frost. Then we got an S plus, we got an S, and then 
could probably even argue B here for AoE, and maybe, I think C for Antiron is fine. Um, she's cracked. She's beyond cracked. And when it comes to late game content, namely Codex, and then, I mean, Gear Aid 4, she is, it's not loaded there either, but she's a, the most solid S plus in the game for Gear Aid 4. She's right there with Valkyra and Demi and those absolute god units. She deserves maybe a triple S, how broken she is and how she makes it go from like, this is really hard to, wow, you just cleared 4-6. Uh, she is that good a hero. Let's go to her hero page. And again, apologies right now. This is another reason why I've been launched it. Slightly slow load times. Look, she's off center. I'm also trying to show you, it looks really good, but we're still working on stuff. It's imperfect. Um, here she is. You can see we have a comparison here for stats. So this is just among healers. So based on all the heroes of one class, so all of the hero class, you can see she ranks pretty high. These are the maximums out of every hero from that class in the whole game. Uh, you can see she's towards the upper end of HP. She is the maximum herself of attack. She has the highest attack of any healer in the game. Defense is meh. Really high magic res resistance, so that's part of the reason why she's so cracked out. Like, against those bookkeeper mages in Guild Wars, she's so hard to kill. If you, you can put her right next to it, she probably can tank it in a nice build. Uh, and then cost, she's pretty dang affordable at, at uh, 16 plus. Let's talk about the skills. Every one of her skills is nuts. Nuts, 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 okay? Mind the little uh, UI issues here, or I guess, I don't know if it's UI, I don't know what the word is. Some of the display stuff, that's just some formatting stuff we're working on. Again, we're not launching yet. This is just a sneak peek. But you can see, this is her ult, Grace of Nature. Not even that cool, but it's awesome. It's the best D spell in the game. Her and Dasami definitely lead the league in that. It's a big heal. You have a nice area of effect. If you have her A5, it will summon, summon a Wood Elf. But basically, it's just a nice big heal. It's really solid. More than anything, it's a crazy dispel. AoE dispel is just not something in this game. It's her, it's Dasami, and it's mid on. You know, Aaron is the fourth hero, the rare hero that has it at all. He is a two, two target one, and it's conditional. Uh, so this is as good as it gets. It is amazing. She's got an AoE heal. They call it AoE heal on her basic, but actually it's a th three hitter. It's a three times multi-target, so she can hit three targets. Because of that, because of the weird stuff in the game, you can use an artifact like Elysian Epitaph on her, which is single target. Basically in this game, it's a binary. It's like it's either AoE, it heals everything in range, or it is a single target. It heals not everything. So that could be one, or in this case, three. So she's extremely, extremely powerful. So if you use her in Healer Codex, you can run her in Elysian Arbit Ar Artifact. A lesion epitaph, I'll leave that in. It's a hard word to say. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, that triple here is insane, and the artifact makes it even better. Really good basic attack. Now the Wood Elf. The Wood Elf is slept on, slept on, slept on. She summons a Wood Elf, restores HP equal to 100% uh, of the hero's healing multiplier. She's got a nice multiplier for surrounding allies. So it's one tile, any melee square, so a floor square, the eight tiles that circle it, the square around it, you know? Uh, it's gonna do it every sec, every 0.5 seconds for 10 seconds. So it's 20 instances of healing equal to 100% of the healing multiplier. It is a lot. Only one Wood Elf can be summoned on the field at once. It lasts for, I actually don't know how, oh, I guess it lasts for 10 seconds. There's the answer. However, if before that 10 seconds is up, the Wood Elf costs five costs to deploy. This is hidden, it's not written in the kit. Five costs to deploy. If before that 10 seconds up, you actually withdraw the Wood Elf from the field and recall him, the the, the recall cost, the, the cost you get back, the refund, is eight. So it's actually a cost generation in her kit. She generates three costs. It costs five, you get eight back. That's a profit of three costs. So it is actually so clutch. There was a lot of, I did over 30 gear aid four takeovers, right? There were a lot of times where the Wood Elf allowed me to cycle my units in the proper way and get my initial deploys out much more effectively. And then, of course, the best, maybe the best skill in the game, Nature's Favor. Uh, so right now, at, at base level, right, what you read over here uh, behind my head, restores rage uh, every five seconds for all allies equal to 1% of the rage cap. So this might not impress you. All allies, Elwin's range is not that cool, right? Every five seconds, only 1%. That's pretty meh. Well, there's a bunch of things you're not noticing. At level five, this is 3% every three seconds. So basically, over a long period of time, it's 1% per second. Outrageous. And then when it says all allies, it doesn't say range here, and that's not a typo. It is any ally deployed on the field, anywhere on the map. It's a map-wide thing, and that's crazy. It is the definition of a global boost. It is the best rage regen. There's a specific content, you know, that Hollow can be better in, namely Guild Boss. But for basically everything, Elowen is the number one queen. She is so good. You combine that with a Wood Elf, you combine it with the D-Spell, you combine it with the big heals. She's in a great faction. She is broken for so much content. She is so, so good. Uh, we'll go here. You can see the individual ratings. S, triple S overall. We only gave that to five non-Lord heroes on only three Lord heroes. She deserves every bit of it, man. These Cs, honestly, I'm probably going to make this a B. I think this is a little low because the Rage Regen is so helpful if you end up in a longer fight. Um, and yeah, C's probably fair for anti-air. But I mean, she is so nuts. I mean, that's a lot of gold and that's some bright triple S red. Uh, sorry if my head was in the way, but 
that's how it goes. Let's go to Anai now, and I'll give you a peek of how the hero list works. Um, so if we go to Anai, you can see loading times. We're working on converting all our images from PNG to WebP to help with site load. It's, we got some very heavy pages. We're doing our absolute darndest. So if I type Anai, you will see it pulls her up. The search, search function is working nice now. It was not the case a few days ago. Here she comes. We wait for the load, and you're going to see Anai has definitely had a glow up. Ignore these attack ranges. We were using Anai as our dummy case. Eventually, we'll have all those perfect. But you can see she's got some okay stats. So for a mage, she's towards the upper end at 45.97. Keep in mind, the low end's really about here. This is taking zero as the minimum. Uh, defense, she's smack in the middle. Magic res, it's whatever. Her costs, kind of typical. Single target mage, though. It's nothing too thrilling, but, I mean, it's fair. Uh, and you can see health, it's it's whatever. Overalls, you can see this is compared to every hero in the game. It is what it is. Anai does magic damage. She's heavily predicated around burn. She's the kind of hero with an auto ult. If it was manual, she'd have a huge boost, especially for guild boss. But she works. She's infernal. It's viable uh, for guild boss, especially if you need an extra unit. Uh, people can make her work, but people would all use someone else if they could, if they had someone more meta. Uh, however, a lot of people that did have to invest in her are not regretting it because she has become an absolute monster 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 when it comes to arbiter frost i even i even built her i built anal just to help me for that i'll read through the kit really quickly and then we'll end this thing already i don't want this to go too long so ember of sorrow let's just focus on the ult this is what's most important triggers automatically when there are enemies in range increasing the damage by 20 percent this damage increase can go up to 40 percent dealing uh 25 percent damage to one target range four times inflicting Four stacks of burning on them immediately during the effect continuously refreshes every burning inflicted by the hero. So nice uptime, really, really good for something somewhere where you need a lot of dot damage. A la damage over time, damage, <laughs> a little redundant, a la Arbiter of Frost. This can become very cheap. It starts at 600. I got mine at level four. I got lucky with my skill dust. That feels fine. Uh, it would be better if I had it max for Arbiter of Frost, sure. Uh, it can go down to 500. It's pretty cool. It's an auto. I really don't like that. If it was manual, though, it would be way better because uh, you really can't control it with Guild Boss and you can't get great use out of it. But she's she's certainly viable. With good enough gear, you can have her on a 50k team. It's just not going to be what you're really looking for. Magic attack here, basic 100% damage to one enemy. Flame of Rage, now passive. Every time the burning inflicted by the hero's damage, uh, there is going to be a 10% chance to re regenerate 0.8% rage. Uh, this goes up to, let me do some math. 1.5% uh, rage. Uh, it's fine. Uh, this is where you'd want her skill ups to land besides the ultimate, uh, but it's not that much, and there's only a 10% chance for it to happen. And then from her talent over here, you can see basic attack has only a 20% chance of inflicting burning on the target to begin with. So basically, you can only count on the ultimate. Uh, it's not so nuts. And then searing gaze for every one burning on the target increases attack by 1%. Uh, second to seven times. So you're talking about a 7% boost. It does get a lot cooler though with skill ups because this is probably the other place. I guess you kind of do just want to land your skill ups everywhere except for the basic uh, because it can be 3% per stack now, right? And then you're talking 21% attack boost. That's really nice. You also get a crit damage increase. That's that's 5% per stack. So 35% when skilled up. It's solid. Uh, she's expensive to invest in and you kind of need to to make her particularly viable. Otherwise, just go for like Amani or something and, and no skin off your back. I guess I will say she's more desirable to invest in because she is so good in that one specific codex, which is kind of what I always said about her. I said if they introduce some content where we really need dot damage, she could shine, and shine she has. If we go to the tier list now, unfortunately, it's going to be a little lower. I think I'd put her solidly at B right now. The reason she is at a C is because we have not yet accounted for Arbiter of Frost in this update to her yet. We're not done with every single one, uh, but she's solid you know if you go to guild boss let's see what we gave her uh b plus i feel like it's spot on i might bump this up to a i probably will uh i probably bump this up to a and i'll probably bump her arbiter frost now they played with her a bit more the past two days i'll probably bump that up to a solid s plus because she she is that good if you have the right team she's gonna help you i got 36 on global with her uh, i can could have gotten higher and a lot of people did a lot better than that um, so all in all, I'd say she's not the L that she was the original time they ran this banner. So it's a great time to pull because it's also a 15X. Uh, let's pop that game back open and let's just end it, I guess, on uh, Elwyn. I mean, what more is there really to, to talk about? I mean, Elwyn is, she's the star. That's who you should be pulling for this weekend. There's all the other circumstances. I, ho I hope that answers everything, guys. Uh, if it doesn't, please do let me know in the comments and I'll help you out. But she's such a superstar. I know healers are harder to get excited about. She's so much more than a healer, man. She's the ultimate support with the cost generation, with the cleanse, and with this just bonkers, bonkers nature's favor. I guess you know how I want to end it. If you get Elowin, do not make the mistake that so many people I've seen make 
and that is they say oh she's not that good i don't get the hype and then i go and i go on their account for a takeover to check it out and i see that they have not max skilled nature's favor the difference between one percent every five seconds and three percent every three seconds is monumental especially when it's on all deployed heroes on the map completely global map wide guys thank you so much for watching i have been fastidious if you like my stuff like it comment subscribe share with your mother i'll see you real soon Fast Didius.